This podcast is not rated. Listener discretion advised. Welcome to the Mission 250 Filmcast, where we are watching the best movies ever made according to IMDb. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna podcast. I refuse to podcast. I'm mutinying. <laughs> John's quitting. John, we're so far. I can't do it. I can't do it. We're almost 200 episodes in. Come on, dude. Let's just keep going. I can't do it. We are on the path to glory, John. No. The path of glory. You know? Yes. Yeah. You know what they say about that? Well, I'll tell you what they say about that, where that line comes from. Okay. But yeah, so we watched the best movies ever made. This week, we are watching number 57, which is the 1957 movie Paths of Glory, directed by Stanley Kubrick. The synopsis is, after refusing to attack an enemy position, a general accuses the soldiers of cowardice. And their commanding officer must defend them. And John and TC yes. are here. What's up, yes. guys? Yeah, Hello. I'm here. This is uh, the 44th movie we've watched that was made before 1960. What do you think of that? Whoa, good, good, uh, good numbers cool. there. I did some Feels counting. Like it. I did some counting before the podcast. Are you impressed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, that's what I was going for. I just wanted <laughs> confirmation <laughs> that you are impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, I was in. Yeah, yes. I believe you. No, it was. Yeah, I I believe you. I I don't need more than that. I'm good. Okay, good. (laughs) He's very simple. And we only have nine more TC pre 60s movies. That's good. That's got to be good news. We're whittling them away. Yeah, it's very good news. Yeah. So this week is my turn to go first. Oh, good. So this movie is. So I made that list of old movies because walking away from this one, I'm just like, this has got to be the best movie pre 1960s that we've watched. You know, really? I think Probably. so. I think that like the way it looks, you can tell it was made by somebody who gives a lot of thought to how things look, the lighting and just the clarity of everything, the mm-hmm. wide shots, the way the camera moves, the dolly shots and the pans and just like the thought between like having a wide shot of two characters. And then when things get serious, they go up to like the close ups of their face and they just go back and forth instead of having them both in the same shot. That type yeah. of stuff. I mean, this movie is basically just two or three people, mostly two or three people in a room talking to each other the whole time. And we've had a lot of old movies like that. And this one is just more efficient than those ones. Those ones seem kind of like the story doesn't necessarily matter. I don't know. Strangers in the Train, Dial M for Murder, a lot of old Hitchcock movies, uh, Double yes, Indemnity. Dang. You know, it's like people talking to each other to progress the plot. But I don't necessarily care about the characters that much like actually care, but there's something about this movie that once they kind of point towards these three people that I feel extremely bad for these three people. They seem like real human beings Mm -hmm. and I'm afraid for their lives. And it's just really tragic. Some of the acting of those guys, they seem very realistic. It just hits home. Like each one of the guys kind of, I'd be like watching it and thinking that that's how I would react. You know, like the freaking guy bawling his eyes out as he's walking down right before he's yeah. about to get executed. I was like, that might be me. Like, what the fuck? He's about to get killed and he can't stop it. You know, he's in this, like the wheels of the, the war machine and, and he doesn't want to be, and he can't beg for his life. Nobody cares. Like he, yeah. even though he's in the right, even though his lawyer did a really good job, the decision was already made before they were selected. There is absolutely nothing they could do yep. to, right. to prevent it. And that's just fucking terrifying. You know, even if like you think you're saving yourself at war by not, running out and just getting mowed down like everyone was, you still just might die anyway. And I don't know. I think personally, I would have rather died in the field than marched out by my own soldiers and be shot. And shot like that. Yeah. Definitely. So like yeah. with all that, like formality surrounding it, it's just so strange to, to know that your death is coming too is a, is a different thing than maybe you're going to die. Right. But that's that's possibly knowing you know this different than knowing that you're about to be like stood up in front of people and shot. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just terrifying. I mean, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of movies where I think like The Green Mile is still coming up. That movie's pretty good, I remember, but like it's a little melodramatic when it comes to this sort of thing. This one just seems like really dry and sickening when it comes to the topic to like a really effective point where some of the shots almost seem like a documentary where they're like marching them out, and it's just that whole execution scene seems to be just linear, right? Like you watch them walk the entire length down. You watch the guys set them up. You have the crying the entire time. You have the instructions to the things. You have the blindfold. Mm-hmm. Like it shows every step of the way. The whole, it doesn't the whole cut movie, forward in time at all. The whole movie scene. feels that way. The movie feels 
really linear in its pacing too, in, yeah. in, a, in a good way. I mean, it, it's a really dense film. It seems like it. It's only an hour and a half or so, right? And it, it yeah, it's seems less than an hour really, and a half. Yeah, so it, it seems to move at this really very fast clip, and and yet it feels often parts of it feel linear. I wonder how much like uh, 1917 was influenced by this. A ton. I was or, gonna say I, lo- I noticed a lot of 1917. And yeah, I'm, yeah, because I totally the way they show the trenches and you just feel this. I wonder how much they were like watching that, going, "Hey, we want to do like this," but just all the oh, time. Yeah, that's the main reason they made 1917. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and even like Terry Gilliam said, this was one of his, or this was the the movie that made him become a director. And in Brazil, when they had the tracking shots down, like the business offices, it was, mm-hmm. that was his homage to this movie for those tracking really? shots. Nice. So, hugely influential movie, I think. But yeah, there's just something about this one. You know, a lot of war movies, they focus on like the soldiers and, and this one kind of does a little bit. I don't know. There's just a lot more like the bureaucracy of everything and like the hierarchy. That and- word is, is yeah. And, and I read the book and the book really goes into it. Um, but I, I actually I should, I read a fraction of the book. I didn't have much time this week, but <laughs> I, I agree that, that this is different. Yeah. This feels very different than the other war movies that we've seen in that sense of, um, it's like showing you that the generals, they're, they're just like management in, in like a, a bad company or something. I mean, they're, they're not that different than what you might see in terms of just the pettiness and covering your own backside that you see in everyday life in like the business world or in other places and seeing that aspect is really terrifying. Yeah. It's like, you know, Sony, it's like, Oh, well, we'll let the, uh, the PlayStation two division run money and then we'll, you know, they'll die out eventually, but we'll bolster this other section of our plan. You know, it's just kind of yeah. like uncaring people. Cause they're so disconnected from the yep. soldiers. And, and to some extent it gets me thinking like, you know, this movie makes me think about real war, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. but like, don't you kind of need some of that anyway? You know, like you have to make tough decisions in war about sacrificing some lives to save more lives. Like you, that you need sort that, of thing. You need that in any organization too, in anything, in any large endeavor, you're going to have people making decisions that affect other people downstream. And you'd like to think that they do that with a care to who they're affecting, but they may do it with just the same sort of common pettiness that we take to a lot of other decisions and sort of, you know, yeah. um, but yeah, it's it's just firing on your own people though. That's that's well, yeah. that's that's low. I yeah. don't think that's usual. Like where you just like I've blatantly. heard of that before. It's like if you run away, then you get shot, right? They have deserter. If you deserve you have that. Well, yeah, but you, yeah, but I'm talking about you know? the what's his name there. That oh yeah, the general told them to actually is, uh, shoot them. Right, right. There and felt, everyone, felt every one of them that. was like, "Well, I'm not going to do that." Yeah, and he was like, "No, you're going to do that." And they're like, "Why would I do that?" That's a little bit extreme. I mean, I would hope that people aren't ready to like just fire on their own people to to move something along. Yeah. Because that was out of like total, like you said, John, petty, like anger that they weren't doing what he wanted. Well, he couldn't be made to look bad. He couldn't, his, his his attack could not be a failure. Right, Um, right, right. What a joke. Yeah. And he was kind of a child. He was a good character. I like that sergeant Mm. with a scar on his face. I have not, I, I was trying to recall a more hateful character. Where I really, really hated this guy. Yep. I think he's up there as far as just being and not overplaying it, you know, not like, ha ha, I'm an evil villain. Yeah. He was really hateful just in the way that he did. I, I think the movie is filled with this. Um, you know, the alcoholic lieutenant, I think he was lieutenant or colonel. A bomb, um, a bomb. Awful, yes, but played really well. Not overdone. Just really really a, a, an upsetting character too in a different way um i thought that those the bad people were played so well that that, that they were really truly like not and the the other the prosecutor guy in the courtroom also just really uh, he was smug wasn't he upsetting fucking guy yeah. yeah and i i was trying to recall a movie that had so many sort of villainous characters not this old, and this old too like this is in the 50s yeah. back when like acting was you know what was it uh like theatrical and theatrical. Broadway, I mean, you were like you're on stage you know right uh on the waterfront was 54 so that was only like three years before this you know so that was contender. like the, the switching That's point right. for <laughs> like naturalistic acting but like this is this is not like on the waterfront, it's more like the stage play e Hollywood type of stuff, but like the way they interact and the the acting in general just makes it it just doesn't seem old. I don't think it seems mm-hmm. old at all. Yeah. It agree. seems like it's like just people actually interacting with each other, actually getting mad at each other, being frustrated, trying to play their hands. You know, uh Kirk Douglas's character knows he has less power 
So he's trying to like, he's not always mad at them because it, that wouldn't do anything. Yeah. I would say sort of felt Kurt at first seemed like he was there and he was like, I'm the hero at first. I don't know. He's, he sort of stood out a little bit in comparison. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe that's just his looks. I don't know, but he was just like, well, it's hey, because man. the first scene he just has his shirt off, and you're like, oh, Kirk yeah, maybe with that's his shirt it. Off. Hey, hey, man, no, it's in my contract. It wasn't his contract. <laughs> it wasn't. Yep, <laughs> he has in every one of his movies. I, it wasn't. Are I mean, you serious? Are you serious? One hundred percent serious. Shirt yeah. off. It oh wasn't. My God. So the wording just... wasn't. Uh, he needs to have his shirt off. The exact line in his contract. This is from the commentary track. Was uh, one scene with a bare chest. Awesome. Ah, Required. Yeah. Required. Kirk Douglas. Manly. Always Very manly. bare chest. That's awesome. Yeah. What a what a thing. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. Nope. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is a joke. It's pretty it funny. It is, but it's still, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I kind of agree. There's only one. I mean, the, the acting is pretty, the whole movie, I think, is pretty flawless and, it, like, efficient, you know? I don't know if that's a compliment mm. or not, but it's only an no, hour I, and a half, I think and it right. seems yeah. epic. And all these, like, exposition scenes... Even in other Kubrick movies, I kind of get bored sometimes with these kind of the one-on-one or two-on-one or you right. know, three, like the dialogue scenes, just talking through things. That's not the case in this movie at all. Like every single time they're they're arguing and talking about stuff, yeah. there's so much weight behind what they're talking about, and it's so so conveyed, like it's so easily conveyed about the weight of what they're talking about that it's interesting. I mean, it's it's really interesting how the focus is the way it is because this is a war movie and you could focus on the suffering and the gruesomeness and the awfulness of war. And that's sort of there in this film, but that's not the focus. The focus is these characters and, and, and the bureaucracy piece and the pettiness of the bad people. And that, it seems like this film is really like trimmed down. Like the book is far more horrific in places in terms of describing some of the, the terribleness of war and, and, and the horrible mutilation that happens to some of these guys. And it feels like the film could have done that, but that would have sort of taken away from how streamlined this is. This is like, this is wanting to tell this story about these characters and this particular thing that happened. And yeah, war was going on and it was awful, but, but it was so focused on this that it, I, I think it's kind of impressive. It like really had this like linear sort of feel of this is really the story we're telling here. Um, we're not trying to talk about the horrors of war. Yeah, it's bad. We all know that. We don't really need to dwell on it, you know. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. I, I agree. I, on one hand, I it feels like this book, it, when I get to the book corner part, the book is is really impressive and has just feels like it's just made for not just this story, but there's a number of stories in there that another modern director were to get a hold of it. You'd think they could just make another really amazing film because of the different scenes and stuff that are in there. But uh, I, I think what they did was really distilled this like one piece of it, especially like the, the focus on that, the, that particular general and the decision to execute these soldiers. Yeah. And that scene where they talk it down from a hundred soldiers to like 12 to three. And he's right. like, yeah, it's actually a pretty good deal for you. Isn't it? And you're like, what? How are they, how are they getting away yeah. with this shit? So yeah. I think that's all I got for now. TC, you've been oh. very quiet over there. What did I TC? watch this? Yeah, I watched this. <laughs> It was short. It's 1957. Good. Yeah. Black and white. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Had to watch it a couple times. Oh. Uh-oh. Not good. <laughs> Didn't know what happened the first time because I barely watched. Second time, I kind of figured out what was going on. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, you know, it wasn't... Uh, I, oh, I don't think man. it was... I mean, you guys liked it a lot more than I did. I love this uh, movie. I, I did, yeah, I didn't were you, have any. Were, awake? were you like all the oh, yeah, way I was awake? Up. Were you alert? I was watching? up. I, I was up. It's just the black and white credits and then the drum, it's, like the marching drums puts him to sleep. It just kills I will me, say that you know? the, sound, the sound is not good, I don't think. Like a lot of the, the explosions and stuff, at yeah, least the way with, I was like, listening the to it. Yeah, what was with like the digital, like, yeah, like the laser whistle. sound? Like, it didn't sound too good, I, I don't yeah. think. Um, I kind of liked it. It made me think that they were actually recording the live sound on the, like with shitty microphones and it was just the microphones they selected oh, weren't good The microphones good enough. are shitty, but it would be like yeah. when you get on like a newscast or something. Oh, maybe. Oh, but yeah, yeah. It, it was kind of hard to listen to at times. It just it yeah, did feel I mean, so like yeah. So. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah, I'm trying I to help dislike. you, TC. So. I didn't dislike. I didn't dislike. <laughs> uh, you guys made it sound a lot better than I thought it was. So I mean, you know, that's good. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I, you know, I don't really have much to say, or like bad or good. What about the, so let me ask you some questions. There's a couple, sure. a couple of lines that have, I saw this movie a long time ago and there's some things that really stick out to me as things that I 
always think of when I think of war movies or just life in general. Like, so there's the one scene where it cuts to the guy who plays Lloyd in The Shining. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that character is one of the three people that gets killed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Joe Turkle is his name. But he's talking to another soldier um, after the battle about getting, like, how you want to die. Like, would you rather die oh, yeah, by getting yeah, like shot? Oh, yeah, like the bayonet. Bayonet. Was, the... It's before yeah. the battle, wasn't it? Isn't it before? I think was it right, right before? before? Okay, right, it's right, right before, before the It's the bayonet yeah. of the machine gun, right? right. That scene, yeah. by the way, is like almost, those parts of it are almost verbatim from the book, yeah. that conversation. I think that conversation is outstanding, and it's like, at the time when I had seen this, I had never thought about that before, and it just yeah. was like mind-blowing to me that it does make a difference. It's like, you would think, Without, if you don't think about it, you would think that if you die, then you die. Who cares how you die? But right, right. Making really this distinction. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's get both shot steel. In the head. It's both entering your body. So we're all thinking about getting hurt. Yeah. yeah I get it. Hey, yeah. That's no, but like, like this idea, like it's I didn't not think about, that much about it. I was just like, yeah, yeah all right. It's, not, it's like not machine the death gun. that scares Next. you. It's, it's being killed <laughs> and, and making that distinction and talking about it, like, and how you're killed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not the thing you should be talking about before going to war. You don't know no wonder well, why they didn't make it up the wire. That's what's on your mind. You know? <laughs> dude, you don't yeah. wonder why they didn't make it past the fucking wire, what do you think dude. Like, be come talking on, about? You guys are bitching out. These guys are bitching out before the fucking thing even started. <laughs> You're making fun of the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was making fun of them. I, I you know, I, uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about this. I don't know. Oh. It was a 1957 movie in black and white. I mean, that's about yeah, all I got. That's true. That's right. I uh, read some reviews about it from Ebert and I was just like, wow, these guys always see so much more than I do in these movies. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really didn't pick this one apart or dive too far into it. It's a, a war movie. One thing I did notice was like John that 1917 had some parts taken from this movie. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I, th- we can move on. I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> I, I could have done what I could have done without this one as much as I could have watched like it. it. So, yeah, it was short enough that I didn't get annoyed, and uh, yeah, yeah he'd be happy I even watched it. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't think Casablanca is going to go think? over very well. Uh oh. Yeah. No. Oh, Casablanca is the worst. <laughs> oh boy, Uh-oh. that'll be that'll be. Did fun. they make you watch that Whee! in film school? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You, many many times. Yeah. Anyway, uh, go ahead, John. Why don't you pick us back oh, up? Oh, we, we, we've covered a lot. I mean, I think what sticks out after seeing it too are the trenches scenes of, of them like just going through the trenches again, totally 1917. But um, but just the men on either side as they're like moving the camera through the trenches as they're walking through them. That's just so impressive. I, I wonder if you get into trivia too, Denny. Like this is one of Kubrick's first films. It's his second. It's his fourth major motion picture. Fourth yep. major. I mean, this is amazing wow. work. Yep. I don't know. I mean, this is like seasoned awesome stuff i agree it's just impressive i don't know how they pulled it off back then or what they did or what the budget was or anything you can tell us all about less that, than a million dollars and three hundred thousand yeah. dollars of that went straight to kirk douglas right no <laughs> shit. <his> yep. chest <laughs> holy shit gotta pay a lot of cash yeah, to see those nipples a lot of wow, cash. he's been making good well, money and, for and a long I, time, I imagine huh? that was a big draw for the film right it was. it was him yeah right so he's the one who um, got it made uh stanley yeah. somehow got through his production manager uh kirk to read the script and kirk fell in love with it and then Nice. Stanley was having a hard time getting the studios to pay the money for it because the ending was so depressing. Because like the main, you know, these right, three right, guys right. die, so no one wants to make good. it. But Kirk was just like, you know, he had sway, so he's like, Come well, on. then he gets that money. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if and he, Kirk was yeah. actually the one too. Stanley, uh, while making the movie, he was struggling with his movie making. Like he wanted to have a successful film. He wanted to make money so he could continue making movies. Yeah. He thought for a bit about creating a happy ending, which went against oh, the book really? for a bit. And then Kirk was just like, dude, no, you can't do that. You have to stick with this. It's going to be better. It doesn't God matter damn, if this Kirk, movie makes money or not. We have to make it the way that you had it. I'll so, be damned. Here you go, Kirk. That's yeah. like the only time I've ever heard Stanley be wrong about something, right? It's like usually Stanley right. is just, he takes advice, but he doesn't well, have like wrong opinions, right? That's like a not totally necessarily wrong or, or just to have him change his, I mean, he's, he's got strong opinions. He doesn't necessarily change his mind. Uh, although, I, I mean, I remember reading in the Stanley and me book, like if he really trusts somebody, he can be talked, you know, he can be talked into things, but, uh, but he, he didn't trust many people. And Kirk also made his career because Kirk was working on Spartacus directly after this movie and the director oh. of Spartacus, they had a falling out Kirk and the director. So they fired that director and Kirk, uh, advocated for Stanley because he had such a good time working uh, with him on this one that he wow. hired him on as the director for Spartacus and Spartacus was a huge hit. And I didn't know, I didn't know Kubrick to, did Spartacus even yeah. and that one's not on our list. Nope. It's got a 7.9. Right. I was just looking it up. So it's almost in the top huh. 250. But it's not. Uh, I wonder if we should watch that one. Maybe, Maybe we should have, watch I've it. never seen Spartacus. Me either. 
But I don't, I don't know should. if you'd like it. It's an old I film. I think it, the decision was just made for us. Yeah. I, well, wait, I think we I mean, should, we didn't, I haven't seen it. Yeah. We, and we, maybe we I should am Spartacus. See it. I've seen the end. I am Spartacus. What is year is that? Yeah, the 1959? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, after this, oh, yeah. <laughs> at least right? a year after 1960? this 1960? Yeah. I it's mean, in color, though, TC. It's in color. Oh, it's in color! Yeah. I wonder if you have to pay extra if you get, uh, Kirk Douglas's chest in color. A nice bronze <laughs> chest. <laughs> nice chest bronze. bronze. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 1960, it. TC. 1960. 1960. Nice. All right. Oh, well, we, can, well, we can think well, about well, it. Yeah. Well. We I mean, can do that one right before or after Doctor Strangelove or something, because this is the second to last maybe. Kubrick. Yeah, yeah, I'll be sad to see. I, How I, long I mean, is Spartacus? We should see most of Kubrick's films. I think it's an epic. Let's see here. Yeah. yeah right. Ooh, three, hours three, three hours and 17 hour. minutes. There we yeah. go. And we are not doing that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it got four Academy Awards, CC. Uh, Come on. Ah, you know how I feel about the Academy. He got best costume design. How can you say no? <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh jeez! What else? I, again, I, I the yeah, I'll remember the scenes of the trench and the villains just being some of the best. I think in in recent memory, I can't really think of. Were you better. angry when you were done watching this? Yeah, yeah, I was angry, but I just was like really like just just really thinking of those people as despicable yep. and yeah. Um, I was I mean, angry too. Like this movie left me. I'm not angry at the movie, but just angry at the characters right. and angry at humans and like. The way these things work, you know? it was trying. In a way, it was sort of soft, I guess. In that they, yeah, you know, I guess they're trying to show. I guess that scene at the end with with the first, they're all like, you know, cat calling the poor crying girl, but then they all start getting sentimental and singing, singing, just sort of, I guess, giving you the sense that there's both bad and good in all of us, or something. And um, this, I don't know, I don't know about that that stuff. That that scene sort of felt like a actually that felt different. That felt like a actual not part of the way the rest of the focus of the movie in a way actually that's one point where it feels like things kind of diverge to have that scene that felt strange it felt like it sort of like was it you know and now we're going to do this because we want to convey some things here um yeah so i kind I of agree people talk about that scene as one of the greatest movie endings of all time you know really these, these critics yeah people always do that type of shit you know they even said that about <laughs> knights of kabiri remember that movie where she was like walking and smiling like she's finally happy she's all not right, dead yeah. or whatever but hooray, hooray yeah. she's a prostitute and she's alive. That's not so That's bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this one's so, like, hey, these guys are uh, all like about to go die these guys are or all kill. Fucked up. But yeah. when the when the oh, girl yeah. who's held against her will sings a pretty song, they all start crying. They, all they, they, they touched sentimental. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, so I'm it, confused by that scene too. But I kind of yeah. like it. I, I I think it's I think it's showing for me, it feels like what I guess what they're trying to convey is just he still cares about his men and he still sees good in them. And, and you're seeing that too, I think. I don't know. Oh, that's definitely what they're going for. It's like, they're, yeah, but, they're not just monsters. Like humans aren't so bad. Right. Right. We, right. You know, they can appreciate beautiful things. Right. Right. Even though we're, we're about, they were cat calling the poor crying little. Yeah. And she's a German prisoner. Girl, she can't even no. speak the right, language. Right. Like it's not that good. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, do you know who that uh, actress is? No, no. The woman that Kubrick at the time would divorce his then wife for to marry one year later and then stay with the rest of his life. 40 plus years. Really? No, that shit. was her? Yep. That was her? That's his wife. She was the art, the artist that lived with him. Yep. Um, wow. Wow. Good for him. It's, it's funny because he did the <laughs> casting for that role and he saw hundreds of women for that. <laughs> so he, he picked basically that picked his wife. Yeah. He picked his wife out. He picked You're his good. Wife. I yeah. think you'll do. Yeah, you'll what, do what, that. for the role. Yeah, that too. That too. Yeah, yeah, for the role too. I guess. Yeah, yeah we can I have guess, you do but, that. Too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you get the role if you marry me. That's right. Yeah, Forty right. That's years. Exactly. It. Wow. Pretty weird, huh? That's. But they seem to have a good relationship. Weird, so, you but know. it happens. Yeah. Yeah. He was twenty-eight years old when he made this movie. Wow, wow. that's pretty young to make yeah. this kind of movie. Jesus, twenty-eight years old. This is coming from yeah. the prodigy that was like a professional photographer at sixteen. Right, 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 so, right, right. So he was like 90 by that time. Yeah, <laughs> he knew what he was doing. We could also maybe watch The Killing. That was the one right before this. And that was... The, that one is supposed to be interesting. That one's the first one people say are, is worth watching. Uh, it's, yeah. it's pretty good, but it's not as good as this one. Well, then we don't need to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then let's not do that. I doubt Spartacus is going to be as good as this one. Spartacus is probably no. all weird and like... Hollywood heroic. Or well, I, I thought, yeah, Spartacus was going to be Hollywood epic. So it's just going to be really long. Miserable. No thanks. Yeah. Not watching. So it's going to be like, what, what, what was it? Was it that was Hollywood Hur? epic. 
Oh, or what do you think it's going to be? Or is it going to be Ben? Which one is it going to be? I don't know. I hope. Yeah, I hope yeah, it's more I, Lawrence I, than Ben. That's oh my God! Yes, sure. Lawrence is the only is the the epic. I, yeah. that one that one is worthy of it. But it's back um, on that everything else yeah. is just four hours of fucking terrible. Yeah, sets. I, don't, I don't know what everything else Miserable. is. But God, yeah, I still I would still happily watch Lawrence again. <laughs> I wouldn't watch Ben Hur again if someone paid me three hundred dollars. That's not God, the exact. No, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll never watch that one again. <laughs> yeah, it was Period. pretty bad. You're right. <laughs> What is the what is oh, the again. DC? If I were to give you cash, cash for four cash hours of your time to watch Ben Hur again, what would be the minimum amount of money you would need to rewatch that movie? Hmm. <laughs> Let's start uh, at a thousand. Would you take one thousand dollars for four I, I hours of your life? I was just about to say one thousand. One thousand. I'd take a thousand. Yeah, I'd, I'd take a thousand. I'd say a thousand. I mean, right, I mean can I do something else too? You no, know, you I have to sit there. My no, bones. you have to sit there and watch room. that bear no chest. Snacks. You get a glass of water. You can refill the what? water no whenever snacks? you want. No snacks. You have to no not Starburst? enjoy it. <laughs> no yeah, Starburst. Right? No popcorn. What? Oh, Jesus, I want a thousand bucks and a huge bag of Starburst, and I'm in. <laughs> and a toothbrush and some toothpaste. Yeah, <laughs> and, and otherwise, I'm not going. You big Starburst yeah. fan over there, TC? I didn't know that. I love hey, Starburst. Starburst are is, awesome. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. Oh, it candy, gives you great fucking indigestion, too. It's awesome. Oh, oh. yeah. Got to only oh, have a couple yeah. at a time, otherwise it's bad Oh, news. yeah, it'll burn your insides. Yeah. It's good stuff. So, in terms of the movie, I think I'm getting close to all I have to say about the movie. Yeah. I I I, I, don't I already I have, hit that I, point. I mean, so. yeah, I don't think I have much <laughs> else. I mean, again, and unlike, <laughs> looks like we're book corner. I, time. I think it's just just like I said before. The interesting thing is, even though it's a war movie, it's not about the war part so much as the characters and their interactions, and that's what again is really interesting. That's all I got though. Too, I can't really think of other stuff. I'd recommend it. Oh yeah, I, well, sure. for an old movie. For an old for movie, an old movie if yeah. you're just in war films, uh, I think, yeah, but... It, I think it, just compared to other war movies, I, I like this one just now more than other The thing ones. is, I wouldn't even call this like a war film so much. It's not oh, really... Oh, it totally is. Totally that. is. It, it, yeah, but it's, it's more not about... A, it's only just because other war movies don't focus on this. It's still yeah. the infrastructure of war. But it's more like, it's more like also, like, also, if you've uh, experienced, like, management then or bureaucracies in organizations, like, this also would be a film you probably really could identify with whether you like war films or not. Maybe there's sure. some uh, additional influences in Brazil there too. Just the uh, yeah, the management right? aspects of things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, 1917 doesn't take the same path. That's just solely no. about one dude running through a battlefield. Right. Like that's all that movie was. Continually running through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it, was, it was trench. an amazing experience, but it is all about the spectacle and it is about the experience of the war for this one individual, not interactions of people and things like that. Yeah, Sam Mendes too. The director of 1917 said he saw this when he was 14 years old, and uh, mm. it made him also want to start making movies. So wow. him yeah. and uh, Terry Gilliam are making movies because of this movie. Wow. So I got some commentary stuff. John, do you want to go to Book Corner first? What do you think? I can. I'm going to be a little disorganized on Book Corner. Oh, jeez. Much, much time this week. Get the glasses on. Prepare for some <laughs> you would rambling. Do you think less time would lead to less disorganization because of smaller amounts of information? That's what I would think. Is that right. the case? No. You spend half the time information gathering, half the time organizing that information? No, I, I don't spend any time organizing the information because I didn't get through it. I didn't get through the book. I, I, I highly recommend this book, though, by the way. It's like okay, what, what do you like, got? What do you got? So, so this is the, the book, Paths of Glory, and it was written in, what, like 1915 and by Irvin S. Cobb, who actually served in, in 1915? The war. So that was yeah. before World War I ended? He wrote it? Yeah. Um, Shit. He was a journalist during World War I. There, there was a 1935 play by this. I really think this, I, I'm surprised this movie hasn't been made again. But maybe it's because once somebody like Kubrick gets it, nobody's going to touch it. It's like Kubrick made a film of this. Uh, there might be a lot of other stuff here, but we're in a, no. Yeah, we don't want to <laughs> screw up poor, like a, yeah. you, com- and, you don't want to compete with that. Yeah. It's the <laughs> negative reviews by everyone. Right? Yeah, yeah right. right. But the, this book is really good. I, if you do like, if you're interested in World War One, it's written really well. For as long ago as it was written, it's very, very readable. And the one scene of like real serious dialogue where they're talking about death versus killing and all of that, that's directly from the book. I mean, this book is kind of amazing in how it shows, it, it spends a lot of time kind of inside the soldiers' heads like that and just what they're thinking and what they're worried about. Um, and there's some pretty horrific scenes in there more about, that are more about the war itself and death. There's, there's this one scene where a lieutenant, or is it lieutenant or commander? Anyway, one of the officers um, gets blown up 
like his hip gets blown off and and there's a, there's a whole sequence uh for a couple of pages where it shows him like delirious and smelling possibly what are his own his own insights and and wondering what that is and just sort of like being kind of delirious about like and slowly dying in this pit um it just pretty horrifying scenes that that again the movie is not like that um yeah the scene where uh, Kirk Douglas kind of hops up on the uh on the trench and blows the whistle and gets everyone yeah. to like go up. That's taken from yeah. the book too, but uh, this is from the commentary because the, the guy who did the commentary read the book, obviously, but that guy that he's like representing gets his head blown off by shrapnel and his right. headless body falls yeah. back into yeah. the trenches immediately after. Yeah. That. Yeah. The book is like Jesus. brutal and, and, and there's, there's a lot of, there's some brutal scenes there. And is it um, all true? How do you write from the perspective of a guy who's dying from a hip getting blown off? Well, he, I don't know. It, it's, it's a sort of nonfiction account, but I'm sure it's like I kind of embellished and I don't know the whole story in the, the penguin classics edition there. They include like at the end, his uh, actual journals, like an edited version of his actual journals while he was a journalist for covering world war one. So, um, I haven't read those, but it's sort of interesting to see like this, this was based on, he, he like took a lot of notes and stuff and then he put it into this story. So it's not like this is, completely nonfiction uh, uh, or completely fiction or either that. I mean, I think it's like he wove this into a narrative that he wanted to tell, but it was based on his experiences. It's uh, so he so probably saw this dude like, die and then just thought yeah, about what it might maybe be thought like. thought about what it might've been like. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, it's, there's so a nice long introduction to by a historian of world war one, like a military historian who, who describes it. I got to poke all the way down here to get his name. Cause I don't want to, not say his name. So let's just do a nice edit here while John slowly pages through here. <laughs> what do you get? A digital book over there? A little Kindle yeah. book? Yeah. Uh, well, it's nice because I can like read it on my phone and I can take notes there and highlight stuff. And then it shows up on my computer too. Um, but you can't tab pages and you can't search. Well, I know. I just. Maybe he just of, doesn't know how, Denny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can tab yeah. them. I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could. I'm just trying to find the end of this section. I had a friend ask recently how you uh, reduce the size of an image on your phone. <laughs> oh. And I was like, well, you don't know how to do that? It's been like fucking 15 years since we all got cell phones. Come on. Yeah, but he's, you know, hit the old age. He's hit his parents. Yeah. I guess. He's at the parents mark. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is open a PDF. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. So, okay, so forward by James, no, it's James H. Meredith, who's it, that's, that's, I just wanted to make sure I said his name, because he's the, the historian. So World War I, uh, he just, he actually just has a really nice kind of like, he describes kind of the setting and how World War I sort of happened. He describes the history a little bit and kind of what, it, how it was different and how it like, you know, there, there was a different kind of war where he says it began like the Napoleonic Wars where like you had this mobile warfare and cavalry charges and antiquated, antiquated elaborate uniforms. And it all led to just enormous casualties because they just get mowed down by machine guns and artillery. So it was this kind of, in the beginning, it was this kind of turning point because they didn't know how to do warfare this way. Like first there's the old way of doing it where you have your horses on soldier on soldiers. You yeah, put on the horse horses. on the soldier. The horses guy runs on like soldiers. hell. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you know there there was this and and what would happen too is then you had the the trench warfare where the people you would have like a line that things would come to a standstill and the two armies would basically build these trenches and then you just had this sort of standoff situation where you have these no man lands no man's lands where you no man cross. land it's got Francis McDormand right. in there she <laughs> reads everybody a nice story there's a nice sense right. and then she gets machine gunned. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they finally the movie lightens up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they got her while she was shitting in the bucket. Yeah, oh, that's, God. Right. Hey, that's right. Hey, you guys aren't helping yeah. <laughs> as usual. <laughs> they got her. I got a little yeah. impatient when you were looking for that name there, so I'm a little. Angry. I know, I know. Now you're pissed. Now, yeah. now I'm the enemy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. So, um, well, something that happened too was because early on these countries lost all of their soldiers, more or less, because everybody just got mowed down. They had to rely more on their actual citizenry to do the war. So they were recruiting a lot more from the common people as opposed to like uh, enlisted soldiers at that point, because all their actual soldiers who were used to soldiering the old way were dead because they got knocked, they got mowed down by machine guns. So, so it became more of like a lot more common men were just involved in the actual that soldiering. That must have been a hard anymore. sell. It's like, hey, our yeah. army is dead. We want you guys right. to go stand in front of this new weaponry, okay? Go ahead and do that. Yeah. 
Uh, there, there's, there's again, well, well said stuff that's pretty succinct about the history of World War One that I won't go into. If you're interested in this time period, this book's a pretty good read. Even, even for the forward and, it's, and introductions are pretty neat. They talk about the, the Battle of Verdun was really like the model for the battle and Pass of Glory for the Ant Hill. In the book, it's called the Pimple. Um, the pimple. Maybe I guess they thought the Ant Hill was was a little less. I don't know, trite sounding, I'm not sure. But for whatever reason, the movie, they changed it to the anthill. But Verdun was sort of like exemplifies the sort of waste of humanity. Uh, and the Germans, like it was about the importance of a single location that was uh, difficult to take once it was captured. And the author of the book had, was present at the Battle of Verdun. Um, and the title of the book is um, an elegy written in a country churchyard is the uh, poem by Thomas Gray. And the line is, the pass of glory lead but to the grave. That's a soldiery type of thing to say. And actually, pass of glory wasn't actually titled by Cobb, the author himself, but came out of a publisher's promotional contest that attracted significant interest. So the author didn't like create that title himself. It was, it was created from a contest. Did somebody get paid to do it? Well, I don't, yeah, somebody won like a, like a, a promote, like name the book and win a prize, I suppose, or <laughs> be proud that you get to name a book. You get a Tootsie Roll. It's 1957. <laughs> we got 10 cent milkshakes and Tootsie Rolls. Name that book. What do you think? If you were to say Star Wars were 10 out of 10, where would you put a Tootsie Roll on that scale? Oh, down at like a three. A three? You're going to give it that much? Maybe That's a, a one four. out of 10. I love a good Tootsie right. Roll. I used to oh, steal really? them when I was like a little, little kid. Why would you it steal them? They're free. Because they, I was little. So they're trying like, to get you know, rid of them. You know, it's when a byproduct you're really little and you're only, you're only as tall as that first level shelf, you know, at the, at the, the, like the CVS. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I just roll in. I started early. You know, I started. They put all the Mr. Good, good bars early. and the nut rages yeah, at yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just Tootsie Roll. <laughs> and they were, literally a, they were literally a penny. And I'd just sit there and I would like run in and the guy would see me and they would be like, uh, it was like a baseball card shop type thing. And I'd come in with my friend and then like not look around and I'd just go right up to the Tootsie Roll, take a punch, put it in my pocket and walk out. Nice. Yeah, yeah he caught me one day. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I don't care. He's like, I've been you seeing please. you steal Tootsie Rolls for like months. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he didn't say it that way. This is yeah. Worcester, right? I mean, no, this is yelling. Melrose. This was Melrose. Mel oh. This is way back. Yeah. Oh. This is when we used to take like, uh, we would just like walk down on the store and back. And like my mom was with me too and I'd be stealing them with her there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, started, started yes, early. Started early. Yeah, right. But so Tootsie Rolls, I'm a fan of, but they're no, they're no star. It's kind of, kind of your own little intro to Goodfellas there, yeah, TC. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And by the time I was at 12, I was emailing Steve Case and telling him to stop sending me, you know, stupid letters. That was funny. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Steve Case is the owner of AOL. Oh, nice. Oh, All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did, he, was, did Steve write back to you? Did uh, he, he did. They you? were not happy. Oh, Jared. So. Yeah, I, I have, I've been having a good time ever since I was a toddler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, well, that was an appropriate well, tangent yeah. on topic. It was a good, a, a good yeah. interlude. It was yeah. good. Tootsie roll, tootsie um, toots, toots. Uh, yeah, I'm going Starburst all day. <laughs> so the book talks about the, the movie and, and they, they quote Tim Dirks, who is, a, I guess, a film critic at the time or, or a film historian saying that the... Um, the film suffered poor box office returns and was banned in France and Switzerland for almost 20 years until the mid-1970s. And Spain. It was actually banned in Spain oh, yeah. in August. And, and really, again, I, I, I think that the, the commentator here is, is just mentioning you know, in terms of the book, it, it's really, and the film as well, it, it's not really meant to criticize war. It's more about the bureaucratic apparatus that is organized to fight modern war that they're, they're poking at here. It's not like necessarily like straight anti-war. It's really more about this kind of bureaucracy piece here. You see, the thing with that statement is, is that is exactly what the commentator said as well. But I disagree yeah. with that because the bureaucracy is a part of the entire thing. And if that system drives these types of decisions, that's well, a part of the whole thing. And that's and the way they yeah. show it is ugly. That to me is anti-war. Like there's no way around it. Right. It doesn't necessarily start the war itself. It's just about how the war is managed and the decisions that are made and how, how this stuff happens. Um, so, you, but it's you bad know, to start the war because once you're in it, then this shit oh, yeah. happens. Like that's right, right, anti-war. Right. I, I think, I think the is thing bad. is, well, and it's not just saying, the thing is not saying, I think when you say it, it's like, it's not just anti-war. It's this also, you know, it's, it's also, it's just anti-bureaucracy, anti-like management of anything by incompetent managers sort of things. Did you ever listen to that podcast that was season two of Serial? Remember Serial? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Did you listen to the second season? Where was, was that, that the shit uh, town one or was that the other one? Uh, this is the one where the guy was in Afghanistan. Oh, and yeah, he, yeah, and yeah. He, yeah. Uh, the one that we, it's in jail now. Yeah. He deserted and he got captured and was tortured for like two years and then was uh, rescued. And now he's in prison. So, and they did a good job of like he killed some giving his point of view of why he deserted. You know, it's like, it's kind of like this. It's like you make decisions to, that make sense to you at the time because you're a living, breathing, thinking human being. Like you have opinions. You might have joined a war for reasons that don't turn out to be true. Things happen and you change your minds, that sort of thing. That's not allowed in war, right? No, like you, it's not if allowed you, if in the military. Go, you don't change no, your mind. Fact, you can't. You can't you don't change your I mean, mind. You, you, yeah. that, that's you not desert, allowed. You can't not obey a command. Like no, this right, movie, right. right. That's it's not like, encouraged. It's it, not allowed. It, you know, You'll get it, it, right, exactly. allowed because killed. if you did that, the war it wouldn't work, right? If anybody yeah. could be like, "Hey, so we're going to take that hill." If you guys feel if we like do it, that, some of us will die. Hey, if it's a bad so, idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to die, so yeah. I'm not going to. All right, right, right. That's understandable. Okay, yeah. Who, who's going? What? Nobody. Who's going? Yeah. Look, Guess I'll give you all a tootsie then. roll <laughs> if you guys get out there now. All right. <laughs> um, you got starburst in there. You got starburst. I'll go for a starburst. A pink one. <laughs> oh, ooh. Yeah. Why don't you just if I can yeah. I eat the starburst first and then Next I can die before the stomach upset sits in because that <laughs> might right. work. You know, yes, like, you can. Good idea. Hey, you know, that might motivate me if I got a yeah. shit. You know, that's right. It's yeah. like I can die before the pain hits me. You know, like, you know. Yeah. yeah, true pain. Yeah, I can't um, so much smell my insides because I'm sucking on this cherry starburst. The flavor <laughs> yeah, is true. Right, and even right. if you do, then you might that's like right. get to die with strawberry in your hey. nose. Going, oh, that's, that's pleasant. Hey, give me a lemon yeah. one. I want to smell clean and fresh. <laughs> God help us. Anyway. Uh, other thing, again, I didn't get far enough the book to see this, but the um, the commentator in the beginning of the book talks about how uh, in the book Dax is not the hero. It's it's far more complicated than the what the movie at least gives you this sort of moral center in in Kirk Douglas's character um, that is just not in the book. That it's Dax himself is not the hero of the book either. It's much more great than that, even for that character. Yeah, it seems like Dax in this movie. What the commentator said was that he was uh, an amalgamation of a bunch of different characters from the book. Mm. So they yeah. just kind of, because, you know, with movies, you got to do that because you have less time to to put forward characters and whatnot. Cobb was 18 when he started his war di- diary. Uh, Damn, so young to be at war. And again, Jesus. I haven't read it, but it's at the end of this Penguin Classics edition. They, they have an edited version of his diary in there, too. Um, but I didn't get to it. Um, it's always I, I, good I, I, to know what you didn't read, John. Very good I know. to know. I'm sorry. I don't want to don't misrepresent things, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's very honest of you yeah I, I think like there's so many scenes in this book that feel almost like someone like Tarantino would just love it there's a scene where a general people are trying to like impress the generals by saying the right thing or trying not to say the wrong thing or there's like this scene where the general's criticizing the name of a trench and like one of the um, subordinates is like suggesting well we should name it after you sir and he's very flattered by this and they, they I, I, there's just this sense of like introspection of the characters and dialogue, kind of what you get, um, you know, that scene about how they're talking about death versus killing that feels very modern. And it feels like it's something that, you know, a modern director would really love, or, or one of those that are like Tarantino who's known for dialogue would really love. There's a lot of for Tarantino book. to remake this movie. Is he the one director that can I remake? Think he is. I would love it. I would love it. I think that it would work out really well. I'd watch, blood. I I'd watch it. I'd watch it. Lots of blood. Yeah. You'd actually see that guy's head get blown off. Yeah, and yeah, it would look really yeah. good, and there'd be way too much blood, but it would look cool. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> he's right. Yeah, you know, uh, they they just talk about different things about uh, the book has a lot of sort of insight about how with command and like, you know, the the commanders themselves are terrified and afraid, but they would issue these commands and they would feel better, and their soldiers would feel better, like you know, projecting strength and assurance, even though they didn't know what the hell was going on. That was also a pretty common theme, um, and that it would make them feel better. You know, they, they wouldn't be sure what they're doing, but they'd like issue a very stern command and then they'd see their troops respond and then they would feel better about it. Um, so again, just a lot of sort of reflection stuff. So there's this one part where it's like they're walking past a marker and like the general's like, that says number five. What does that mean? And they're, they're like, uh, that's no name for a place. And, and like the, another subordinate is like, well, well, it's uh, five kilometers, you know, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, wherever something. Um, and, <laughs> oh, and wow. oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't recreate what it. What are now. you talking about? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. What are you uh, going on about? Um, let me let, just, let me see if I can find that line because I thought again I thought it was very like um, confusing. <laughs> no, it was very funny it. when I read it. Right. So it's like the asshole general is is like, tell me, you know, why is this utterly undistinguished spot in the road called number five? That's weird. Number five, what? Battery regiment one. And, and the other like subordinate who's like trying to say it's like it's number five kilometer, sir. He said with a smile. And he's like, oh, of course. And he bathed it and said, okay, that's good. He didn't really like number five kilometer from where. Didn't matter. It's just like they just gave the general like an answer to make him feel like that it had some kind of meaning. I don't know. Just this kind of like exchange of like (laughs) silliness. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like the general's like demanding to know there's this number five marker. He wants to know what it means. Nobody really knows what it means. So you're inserting Monty Python into this scenario, is what you're doing. (laughs) Number five. Number five. Five 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 kilometers. Oh, Uh, from where? uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. That's exactly Fine. what you did. Yeah. Is that yeah. wrong, John? Is yeah. that wrong? Are we the bad? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Yes. Anyway, that's as far as I got in the book, which is about like, you know, maybe a third of the way through. I didn't I didn't have time this this week to read. But again, I I really liked it. I want to hopefully I can get some time to read it more, but then I'll I've got to be on to whatever it is we're watching next and I'm not sure and, you're going to have time. I'm not sure there's going to be anything to read for the next one. Is it isn't it Battle Royale? Yeah. So TC's yeah, all know. asleep this episode, but next Denny. week he'll be oh, all. Oh, yeah, next Denny. episode, I'm going to be Battle ready. Battle Royale is based on a book. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, I texted you that. Oh, and I you didn't said, read your yes, text. Well, I didn't read your text. And you, you responded, know? yes, it is. No, I didn't. Oh. You did. I must have been lying. I didn't no, know that. No, sir. You must let's have been go, lying. Let's, go, and let's go to the record. Yeah, John, whatever, John. Sure, John. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure. Thank you, John. Sure. Well, see you All right, Wednesday, we're going to John. Trivia. So you're done, John, with the, the bookie? I'm done. Go to trivia. Book, book, trivia quarter, time. Quarter. Bum, bum, bum. So trivia was from a book historian dude. It was uh, pretty good as far as book historian dude commentary tracks go. So if you like this movie, definitely worth a listen. The Timothy Carey character who plays the, the taller guy who cries, one of the three prisoners that's, that gets uh, executed. He was fired during the shoot of this movie. Uh, he was famous for what? being disruptive on all movie sets. Yeah, oh. he ended up like, he overdoes it. He improvs a lot. The only two people that this guy, Tim Carey, liked in his life that he worked with was Stanley Kubrick and John Cassavetti, or what, what the fuck is his name? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, no. I, I have name. no idea who you're talking about. Stanley Kubrick is one of the two people that this guy liked, but he got fired <laughs> during the course of this movie for two reasons. One, the scene at the end where he was crying and kind of going over the top uh, when he was being led to his execution. That was all improv, and that was against the direction. And the priest, if you watch him, he's irritated by him because he's not doing what he's directed. He is, and the guy isn't prepared for it, so he's just angry because he thinks he's ruining the takes. And he's also biting him. There's like in the one of the shots, you see him in his improv bites the arm of the priest because he's so desperate to not die. Um, wow. yeah. So he didn't like him. Kirk Douglas didn't like him. He didn't like it how he wasn't following direction. So that he's scene, good though. He's great. <laughs> he makes that scene. I think yeah. every scene he's in. Well, that was part he's, of the problem. He, he's Kubrick so was expressive. A, uh, Kirk didn't like him because he was stealing the scenes. Uh, so Kirk didn't yeah, so. like that, obviously. But I'm getting paid three hundred grand, and you're yeah. stealing my scenes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Look, he, he doesn't even have his shirt off. God. <laughs> I mean, but he was so like charismatic. Just looking at him, he was yeah. so like, yeah. Yeah, so I I see By the way, Battle Royale, based on a book, I, th- I think in my texting, you, I was saying, like, Get Out's pretty good. So, and maybe that's what you're responding to because I said, like, Battle Royale will be fun because it's based on a book. And you said, It is, yeah. But I think maybe you were saying, Yeah. Uh-huh. So, Danny oh, doesn't Get know. Out is good, is what I was saying. Get Out yeah, is yeah, good. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. We were talking about horror movies to watch. But yeah, Battle Royale yeah, is Battle Royale is going to be so great. I had to go read that. Yeah. I just bought the DVD because it's a four disc special edition thing. So there's going to be a lot of special features. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know how I love those special features. Nice. I don't know what a DVD is. Uh, <laughs> it's all <laughs> streaming these days. I'll buy it digital, though. Yeah. I wonder where we can stream it. Probably all over the place. Anyway, we got to finish. Let's finish our work here. Let's do oh, it. Oh, right. Yeah, is that what we're doing? Kubrick fought with the actress to get more takes. He, uh, this was like the first instance of people counting how many takes he did for certain scenes. Oh, uh, and they were like, we don't want to do another one. He's like, yeah, <laughs> tough yeah, shit. we're gonna. There was uh, the older guy who played uh, the general with a scar on his face. He was like a seasoned old actor. He'd done a lot of stuff. And Kubrick was making him work through lunch. And the guy was just about to... Kubrick's like, we need to do it again. And we didn't get it. And the guy yelled at Kubrick for like five minutes and Kubrick wow. just stood there and took it 
And then when the guy was done, he's like, we need to do it again. And the guy was like, fine. <laughs> and then he did it again. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> so Cooper wow. just got him to do like, it again. Are you done? Are you the guy's done? The guy like a 60-year-old vet of acting and this 28-year-old kid who has yet to prove himself in any way right. is like just taking it and be like, we're doing it again. Do yeah. it again. I give, I give two shits about your lunch. Here we go. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was one of the instances. The, uh, the prison scene where they discuss their fates and, uh, you know, the three guys discuss their fates. 74 yeah. takes. Holy cow. They did it all in one day and they actually ran into the night and this, is, this, this movie was filmed uh, in Germany and they have some laws against like overtime and stuff but mm-hmm. Kubrick kind of undercut Broke those laws. Broke them Never, never a fan of <laughs> yeah. the unions, Kubrick was. Some of the officials came in and like take 61 or something like that and was like, hey, you have to call it today and somehow Kubrick got 13 more takes and the 74th take was the one you saw in the movie. <laughs> I'll be dead. Jesus Christ. So, it's so annoying that he uses those ones too. Yeah. Like, it's like, well, it's good. So, you know, what are you going to do? The, the one that's most famous in this movie and the commentator, you know, little disclaimer here, expressed his uh, potential non-belief of these facts because he admitted it sounds like um, advertising propaganda sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the scene where they were brought in the food and it was one continuous take while they were talking about the cockroach. And like, it was the one where it's like, maybe they poisoned us. Why would they do that? That cockroach. Mm -hmm. They're like, that's all one take, one shot. They brought in ducks. And this guy, Tim Carey, who was the one guy who took a bite of the duck, couldn't bite the duck in the same way every time. Like he wouldn't do it correctly. So they'd have to bring in fresh ducks for every single take. It was 64 takes. They said it was 18 duck dinners that were prepared for this. Holy shit. It's 64 takes. It took five hours. That's pretty damn fast. They must be like, Running the takes over and over. I guess again. So. yeah, pretty well. You know, when you're doing this, you probably when you're working with Kubrick, you probably get real good at retakes. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. He, so 64, holy yeah, God. and 12 roaches were killed. They said that was part that he didn't. That was a part that he didn't totally believe because well, you they don't never actually showed the see, roach. Exactly. You don't see the roach. You I don't, don't even see, see why you need. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's not real if you don't have the real bug. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, and then one of the actors who was smoking cigarettes was a non-smoker. And during that, he had to smoke 11 packs of cigarettes just for those 64 takes. And then Jeez. he was a smoker. Yeah. And then he was, yeah, seriously. That's yeah. pretty intense. If that's real. Again, the commentator was like, I don't know if that's true or not, but this is published. So. Wow. Who knows? So the other thing that the uh, Tim Carey guy got fired for, this is the main one. He faked his own kidnapping for personal publicity reasons. Oh wow, they were doing that shit even back then, huh? Yeah. This guy to sounds get, like a headlines. lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hang out with him? Yeah, no kid, right? He's like an Andy Kaufman sort of guy. That's pretty weird. So they fired him for that because he just stopped showing up. And he came back. He's like, hey, guys. And they're like, no, 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 yeah, dude. You're, you're done. You're not on this film anymore. Yeah. And they actually had, they had to use a double for the confession scene with him in it. That's not him. Oh, in really? Shot. Yeah. I'll be damned. Timothy Carey, huh? Uh, The French troops were 600 off-duty Munich police officers. The field they built, they rented the space from a German farmer. It was 5,000 square yards of a pasture. They ended up digging up all the farmer's crops and paying him for that year's crops. And then 60 men spent three weeks turning it into that set, building the trenches, laying the barbed wire. They actually, while they were building the set, laid the explosives. And all those explosives were done in a single take with multiple cameras. Hmm. They practiced it a bunch of times. It was 600 police officers all moving across the fields. They were all assigned death zones is what they called it. So they all just didn't die like at the end or at the beginning. Like they spread it out. You know, they assigned each of the 600 a spot to die in. So the deaths would be like spread out. So it looked good sort of thing. Um, When they were practicing it, all the cops were trying to be heroic. And they were playing like cowboys and Indians where they'd like run up and like duck and like point the gun and stuff. And Kubrick's direction to all of them, and he had to work at it, was to make them go slow and look terrified. No one was heroic. You just wanted to all look like you're just, your next step is going to kill you sort of thing. Yeah. So, wow. But I think that's pretty unique for war movies too, at least back then. Yep. On that set, it was cold and wet. It smelled terrible because they dug up all the ground in a farmland and everybody got sick because of the, the weather. Ugh. So when they were being filmed, all the soldiers were actually sick with like a cold or a flu or something. So that aided to how miserable everybody looked. The, the guy who plays the drunk guy was actually a real war hero in World War II. Uh, he was oh, in 50 no uh, flight combat missions and he was like uh, honored and all this shit. Like he was a hero for real. And he died at 45 from a heart attack. 
but sucks. I thought yeah. you were going to say that guy, the drunk guy, he was actually yeah. an alcoholic. He was actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looked the part. He did a good he job. Was, yeah, he was actually in AA. He was uh, doing meetings, you know, he was trying, you know. The novel rights were bought for $10,000 from the widow of the guy who wrote the book. That's not very much compared to Kirk Douglas's $300,000. Yeah. But apparently the, the book was not like hugely popular at the time, I think. I think like the film helped actually resurrect the book's popularity. Yeah, Kubrick was a big fan, but it wasn't that popular at the time. So the interior of their little office was a set. The war thing, like the war area was that that farm in Germany, but the um the court martial scene in the exteriors where they were pulling up was called the Schleshhelm Castle. I don't I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it's in Germany. It's actually right next to Dachau, the Dachau Museum currently, but that's where that prisoner camp was. It was right near, you know, which building I'm talking about? No. The huge seal, where, where they had the court martial scene, where it was like the huge ceiling, marble floors. No, it was like the, the elegant sort of like place where they held the trial, yeah. And where they marched them down to in the background, that giant yeah, yeah. building, that's the same thing. So they filmed it there. That scar on that guy's face was real. He had it his entire career. He was in a terrible car accident by smashing. He slid on ice, smashed a Ford Model T into a telephone pole and flew through the windshield, cut his face Damn. out. Oh, my God. In most of the other movies, you can barely see it. Hit it with makeup. They hit his scar with makeup. Um, but in this one, they accentuated it so you could actually see it. So they put makeup on it to make it look right. more like a scar. Worse. This commentary is recorded in 2010. The commentator shat on the movie The Green Zone with Matt Damon twice. They were like an hour <laughs> apart. So it was just kind of funny because I don't even remember the green zone. I don't, I don't remember it either, either. Yeah, but like he must have it. just seen it. And he's like, oh, maybe this is so. a war movie. And I'm prepping to go do the commentary track for Paths of Glory. So I'm going to make some comparisons to this Paul Greengrass movie. Why not? Uh, last piece of trivia is that 2000 fake beards and mustaches were made for this movie. So every beard and mustache you saw was fake. Oh, wow. Pretty good. Cool. Pretty good, huh, TC? Couldn't guess there Pretty was one good. fake one in there. Yeah, Pretty I good. Didn't, I didn't notice that. Didn't know. Oh, TC, uh, he's, he's seeing the end of wind down. He puts his phone down. He's back. He's I'm talking. Alive. He's breathing. Uh, uh, yep. He done, he done with the Tinder alive. or whatever he's doing? No, I just had to, you know, count my money. Uh, okay. <laughs> my my freaking Bitcoins. How many Bitcoins do I have these days? Uh, you know, none. Oh, uh, no Bitcoins? That's a sad thing. Nah, I'm out of the crypto. Uh, that's smart. That shit is out of control. Anyway. It is. So, TC, let's start with you. Top 250? What do you say? No. No, John, what would you, what would you say yeah. there, John? Yeah, I'm going to go, yep, too. I just say yeah. no because I knew you guys were going to go yes. Yeah, I exactly. know. It's good yeah, Good yeah. to have a difference of opinion. I would yeah. recommend this movie to people that like war movies. I it's might. A, it's a rare one. I right? would recommend it it's to people short. who yeah. don't it's like short. war movies. It doesn't yeah. feel like the usual war movie. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think there's other aspects of it that are also really interesting. I, I mean, as far as old movies go, this is one of the better ones. Well, there you go. There you, you go. go. That's all we expected. Yeah. I'm glad you right. said Faint it. Faint praise yeah. from the grouchy one. That's right. That's right. All right. So now what we're going to do here, guys, that we're, so I think this one's coming out in October, but we're going to do four weeks of October, four weeks of Halloween. That's going to be fun. That's yeah. Right. We're going to do some freaking yeah. horror movies that are <laughs> entirely off the list because yep. I think there's but only- should be on the list. Should be on the list. They're all pretty close. The one next week has a 7.6, which is- Pretty good so for close. this type for of movie. movie. Yeah. Well, this is this is the movie the the movie Quentin Tarantino wished that he had made. He said it's his favorite movie ever. Is what he's. I, I have seen sticker. this movie yeah. like so many times. I can't even count at this nice. point. It is so good, dude. You oh, know what? Good, you know good. what I realized? I don't I have know. Never seen it. I've never oh, seen you've it either. Never seen it. I've never seen no. it either. TC. Oh my I god! Thought get I had, ready, guys. But then I watched get the trailer, ready. and then I was like, I haven't seen this. This holy all looks shit, new. dude! You're in for a wild ride. Excited. It is gnarly. So good luck, <laughs> John. Don't watch it with kids around. It okay. is. It sounds like a good Halloween one, right gnarly. there. Gnarly. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Lots of blood. Lots. Do we of want gnarly. to discuss briefly the other options now, or what do you think? Sure. What What were the other options that you sent? You sent so a the, bunch. So I want to watch. I want to watch the Baba Duke. That actually really looked good. I want to watch that good. one too. I've yeah. seen it, but yeah. And and I actually did. I see it with you, Danny. I might have seen it with you. I did not that see it. Is I think I don't know. Did together. you see it with Naomi? Because I saw it with Naomi. Oh, really? Because that was the last that movie turned her off of horror movies forever. Oh, oh really? boy, that's gonna be a good one. Yeah. All right. She yeah. used to watch horror movies. With Shut me off in the, the theaters, lights and that one. Just turn ended up the it. audio. Wonder, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> maybe it wasn't with. Maybe we were. I, I saw it in Boston, but maybe it wasn't with you. Um, anyway, 
My, yeah, uh, my most yeah. memorable thing is that's that's the movie that made Naomi stop watching horror movies with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, and it, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if I want to watch so. it again, but but I'll do it if you guys are enthusiastic about it. So. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so there's one. What's the next one? Uh, Evil Dead 2. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've seen that. John? That's that's the one you want to do, right? Out of all the Evil Deads. You think that's the one to do? That's my favorite one. That's not the not the modern one, but the, that's like the Do you the have to watch the first one? If, no, no. The second one is a remake uh, of the first one. Right, right. That's uh, how weird the series uh, is. Oh, uh, um, okay. The first one is so, full-on horror. The second one is horror comedy, comedy mix right, in the weirdest right. way. And then the third one I think is pure Evil comedy. Evil Dead 2 is good to watch. It, it, that, that film has uh, definitely is a cult film, so it'll be good to watch that one. Um, okay. You don't sound too enthusiastic about these two choices, John. I am not a big, big horror film fan. Uh, Wait, what? Dude, the last two movies we saw together were both horror movies in fucking Boston. I'm just Uh, trying to make you happy I am not huge on horror either. (laughs) We saw It Follows and Ouija 2 Origins. I like going to see horror films like opening night or having it be an event. To go see a horror film in a theater, that's fun. That is, yeah. That's the best. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not as, it's not as much fun to see horror films like by yourself. You know, or at no, home or, I can you know, I can attest to that. That is hoping not great. the kids aren't going to come downstairs or what have yeah. you. Yeah, but um, yeah, Battle Royale is rough because it's just uh, it's it's uh, I don't know how to describe it. Don't don't say don't yeah, say don't say no. Don't it's blo- it's just it's it's gory, bloody. Yeah. So the other so those two are the ones I I I would like to watch, but we don't need to. If 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 you've seen them yeah. and you're not enthusiastic about it, I'd rather not, John. So that's where I stand. But oh, yeah. the other three I listed were Hereditary, The Witch, and Let the Right One In. I don't think I've seen any. Any of those? Have you so, seen those? So John? I have seen "Let the Right One In" and really liked it. Um, that one, the the original version, the not original the one. remake. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen "Hereditary" and I haven't seen "The Witch." So, so um, the witch it is, maybe or "Hereditary." I or think right. which one's might, better? You might like. So I think "The Witch" is slightly better, but "Hereditary." The witch is a little bit slower. It's kind of like a period piece horror type of thing. All right, "Hereditary" and "Hereditary" <laughs> is more like a full on horror yeah. movie. Let's just right. do that one then. So we got our picks. So Battle Royale, Royale Evil Dead 2, Hereditary. Yep. And the Babadook. Babad- Babadook. And the Babadook. That's it. There's your, there's your month of that October. That sounds great to me, John. You can, you can yeah. think about it if you want to say no. No, I, I did like the Babadook when I saw it. It was scary. Too much so I, I, I definitely uh, thought it was scary. Um, you know. No, no. I, I thought it was very scary. So uh, Battle Royale, it. baby. Looking forward to that. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> Battle Royale, first and foremost. I can't no question wait there. to watch right. that this one is, again. Is this the first movie that TC has seen and we haven't seen? That might be yes. the case. I've yes. seen this movie at least five times, <laughs> if not I think more. This, this, is, yeah, yeah. This, this is a yeah. uh, This is a first. I it's think, a good one. Sure. Well, I hope it's a good one. I hope you guys like it, but you may not because it's pretty rough. You know. <laughs> there may have been a film school film that maybe TC had seen that we hadn't. I don't know. That, I uh, can see that happening, but I don't remember that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't like movies, so. Yeah, he definitely didn't watch whatever <laughs> that one was five times. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, I, right. this one, you know, uh, is a whole different story. All right. Well, sweet. I'm looking forward to it. Got Battle uh, Royale for sure. Let's we, go. We can, John, would you mind if I skip it. over you? We can go back to you, but let's have TC go next week, right? Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's do it. I don't care. Yeah. All right. Sounds yeah. good. All right. All right, boys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Take care, guys.